You do too. When you sit around and watch TV, well, you, you get a snack. Uh, and you're not paying attention to how much you're eating. So you don't really measure out your portions. Although you can if you're, uh, you know, a, a very conscious person. You can certainly just, you know, measure out the amount and don't go past it. So that might be part of the reason why watching TV seems to raise it. Because I'm wondering, you know, if how about if I sit and I'm not watching TV, but I'm reading a book? Does it have the same effect? You think it would, because you're still sitting still. But it doesn't seem to. And I haven't seen any uh, studies on it yet, but it doesn't seem to. Uh, what if I'm sitting on the couch and having a long phone conversation with someone for you know, an hour or two hours or more. Uh, and believe me, I've had those. Those those happen. <laughs> um, does that increase the risk of diabetes? Or is it just the, the, active, the, 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 the act of watching TV? And what about that act <clears throat> raises the diabetes level? Well, the researchers on this uh, conclude that not everyone in the general population would be at risk. Uh, we would hypothesize that the risk increase from TV watching may be lower in those not at high risk for diabetes, but obviously could not test that in our population. Today. Well, yeah. So if you are at risk and uh, you like to watch TV, that's one of the uh, lifestyle changes you have to think about, about how much TV you're going to watch. They're saying even two hours a day is is uh, not good. So the um, <clears throat> the question then becomes is you know if you're watching TV and you want to. Uh, maintain a <clears throat> level of physical activity uh, how do you do it uh, so in the absence of movement <clears throat> or if you're sitting and watching TV what can you do to to, to you know mediate those effects and uh, there's been research about sitting at, at, desk, at the desk at work, too, which seems to also be, uh, you know, a health risk. So um, now this article on the absence of movement comes from uh, Dr. Andrew Weil's website, drweil.com. <clears throat> and uh, this article says that uh, we know that spending too much time sitting at your desk at work and at home in front of the TV is unhealthy. Worse, research now suggests that all sitting exacts a heavy price, an increased risk of premature death from all causes, including cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, colon and colorectal cancer, adding up to 5 million deaths worldwide each year. To reach these conclusions, an international team of researchers analyzed data from 16 studies, including information on more than 1 million men and women mainly aged 45 and older, living in Western Europe, the U.S., and Australia. And they found that those most likely to die prematurely performed less than five minutes a day of moderate, inten moderate intensity physical activity, which they defined as being equal to walking uh, 3.5 miles an hour or biking at 10 miles per hour. The investigation also yielded some positive news. It showed that the risks of sitting for eight hours or more daily can be eliminated with an hour or more of daily physical activity. If you can't manage to fit that amount of exercise time into your schedule, uh, according to this study that was done at uh, Cambridge University in the UK, uh, the advice is to do as much as you can because at least doing some exercise each day 
can help reduce the risk. Now, uh, Doctor Doctor Wiles uh, sort of weighs in on, on this information, and he, you know, he says that uh, recent studies uh, have presented conflicting findings about the health risks of sitting too much and whether or not exercise can help overcome them. Uh, and he feels like this latest analysis of the 16 earlier studies uh, gives some reason for optimism. Uh, but he says the bottom line is the same as it's been. The risk to health is not necessarily sitting itself, but lack of exercise. And what's really detrimental to well-being appears to be the absence of movement. So if you're sitting and watching TV, or you're sitting in front of your desk, and you move, you get up, you twist, you turn, you jump. Then, that can help you. So, Dr. Weil has some advice about when you're watching TV, pretend you're flying. Now, watching television for five or more hours daily. Uh, now, we're up to five hours. We're talking about two hours before even that's bad enough, but five hours. Now, that increases the risk of dying from a blood clot, blood clot on the lung. And this is from a Japanese study, um, <clears throat> which may apply here as well, because Americans watch more TV than the Japanese. In 1988 to 1990, the researchers asked 86,024 people between the ages of 40 and 79 how much time they spent watching television and then followed the group for 19 years. Compared to those who watched less than two and a half hours of TV daily, deaths from pulmonary embolism were 70% higher among those who watched between two and a half and 4.9 hours. The risks also rose by 40% for each additional two hours of daily TV time and increased 2.5 times among those watching five hours or more. These blood clots usually form in the leg or pelvis as a result of inactivity and sluggish blood flow and can break free and travel to a lung. Other activities that can increase a, uh, uh, the risk of forming blood clots, including sitting during long airplane flights, which is why it's a good idea to stand up, stretch, move and flex your leg muscles when you're in a flight and in front of your TV. And drinking water can also help reduce the risk. Uh, and if you lose some weight, <clears throat> that helps even more. So it's not so much the sitting, <clears throat> it's the not moving now, I don't know who's doing this. I know I can't sit still that long in front of the TV or the computer without twisting around, without moving around, without getting up, without stretching. So I don't know who's sitting catatonically in front of a TV, but um, <clears throat> those are health, health risks to watch out for. So how do we... Do some more exercising. Uh, well, one way to do it, one thing you can do, and some of these things you can do, you know, if you pause the TV for a little while or you take a break from the computer, you can do a yoga pose <clears throat> that will really help you. And um, one of the most popular yoga poses, and most well-known is, and you've probably heard it, even if you don't know yoga, you've probably heard of Downward Facing Dog. Downward Facing Dog is so easy to do. You can just stand up from your couch, uh, you know, move some chairs if you've got a lot of clutter, make a little bit of space, and you can do a Downward Facing Dog for a few minutes. <clears throat> uh, some of the uh, results of that are... Um, Relief of stress and mild depression, energizing the body, stretching the shoulders, hamstrings, calves, arches, and hands, strengthening the arms and legs, and it can also help in preventing osteoporosis. So, in case you don't know 
how to do downward facing dog. Here's how it works. You start <clears throat> by resting your hands and knees on the floor with your toes curled up. And of course you're wearing loose loose fitting clothing like maybe shorts and a t-shirt or um, some women will wear tights. Uh, it's up to you. But, um, you know, gym style clothes. So set your knees directly below your hips and place your hands slightly forward of your shoulders. After that, exhale and push your knees away from the floor, raising your hips and straightening your legs. Keep your arms straight and hands firmly on the floor. Rotate the shoulder blades out away from your head. Let the head hang in line with the arms with eyes looking up at the navel keeping the neck free from extension. So don't extend the neck, just turn it. Keep the tailbone pointed to the sky. And the body should look like an inverted V from the side. Now hold the position for 30 seconds to two minutes. See how long you can hold it. You know, as you do it repeatedly, see if you can hold it a little longer each time. And pay careful attention to your shoulders and wrists and stop if you feel any pain. To release from downward facing dog, exhale and slowly drop to your knees to the floor. and Come to a rest with your arms under your shoulders. And that position is known as child's pose. So you can start in child's pose. It's very easy. You know, knees on the floor, arms under your shoulders, and then move into downward facing dog by raising your knees, stretching out your arms, and bending your torso so you are in an inverted V position. And then go back to child's pose to rest. You know, let's say you hold it 30 seconds each time, and then rest another 30 seconds. You could do that during a two and a half minute commercial break. And um, I bet that would really improve a lot of uh, what they're talking about here. Now, some of the health benefits, as I've mentioned, is, uh, you know, relieving stress, depression, uh, you know, as well as strengthening the shoulders, uh, improving the immune system, dige digestion and blood flow. Um, and this comes from a study in 2012 from Frontiers in Psychiatry and found that uh, there is support for yoga in treating depression and sleep disorders. So even if you're having trouble sleeping, this can help you. Now, uh, if you're unable to straighten your legs, you know, I mean, if you're new to doing yoga and things like uh, downward facing dog, uh, and you can't quite reach that V position, uh, you can drop to the knees slightly. You can drop the knees slightly. You don't have to go all the way. You can just build to getting into that position. Also, uh, you could start from a standing position, bend at the waist, and rest the arms on a chair or uh, against a wall. And that's a modification that is also beneficial. And then if you are, you know, really on top of this and you want to do something more advanced uh, to deepen the pose uh, and stretch more, you can enter into the pose and then use your calf muscles to lift up onto the balls of your feet and then drop your forearms to the floor and rest on them. Now that can increase the stretch of the leg muscles. And uh, another modification is you can widen your starting position, widen your stance and follow the same movement. And you can also lift one leg so that it's in line with the arms in Downward Dog. And then switch the legs after 30 seconds. So you can play with it and grow with it. And, uh, you know, I think it's an amazing uh, pose. It's so versatile. Um, you know, it's the first thing I learned when I learned yoga. Uh, and it's something, as I say, you can do it anywhere. Maybe not on a plane. 
So there.